A lot of guys that are decent at game, they can have a decent interaction. They can have a decent relationship with a girl who they're not that attracted to. If they're a little bit attracted. They can be alpha. They can give the girl a hard time. They can push her away. And then all of a sudden they meet a girl and I hear this phrase, I actually like this one. As soon as I hear, I actually like this one, I think to myself, you are actually not going to sleep with this one. Okay. Because you're going to treat her differently. Or if you do sleep with her, you're going to give away so much power and try so hard in the process of sleeping with her that you're going to create an awful relationship. It'll be unsustainable. It's so, so critical to stay the course and stay the program, especially when you get that girl that's special. That's when it's even more important to treat her exactly the same way you would any other girl and to, um, to manage the relationship from the first moment. All right. The last thing you want to do is finally get the girl of your dreams and get her in such a way that you've created a toxic relationship and it can never work out. That's when it's even more important to set the precedent and set the relationship up the right way. And I really want to make a point, which is that a lot of the stuff that, that I've said, if you, if you really think about it, it, it does sound a little manipulative, right? It sounds a little bit like you want the power in the relationship or you want to be able to adjust the dynamics this way or that way. Um, but the fact of the matter is, there's a why behind it. Why do you want the power? Why do you want to be able to adjust the dynamics? It's because if you don't, the relationship will go south. If you don't create the relationship the right way actively, she will create it actively the wrong way. <clears throat> and that is because um, essentially the girl thinks she wants certain things from you and biologically she kind of does. But most of the time, they don't understand the ancillary consequences of those things. Okay. So what happens is, and this happens so, so, so often, it's even happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm not immune to this. Uh, not, thankfully, not recently, but it has happened a lot in my learning progression. You end up in a relationship with a girl and you really like this girl. The relationship seems really good. And she asks a little something of you. Like maybe she asks you to be a little less playerish or she asks you to be a little more available or to meet her family or various things like this, or to, you know, um, certain habits that, that you have that, that she doesn't like, she asks you to, you know, maybe not do those around her or not do those at all or whatever. And you're kind of annoyed by it, but you kind of make a little concession, right? And then you think, okay, cool. I did something for her. And then comes up a little later that there's some other little thing. And look, you like the girl, you've invested even more in her. Now you spent more time with her. And then she asks for another little concession. And you do that and another little concession, another little concession. And two things are going to happen. One is at some point, the concessions are going to be too many and you're likely to start resenting it. You're likely to still, you'll still be like, this is an amazing girl. She's so incredible, but the relationship just isn't making you happy anymore. Or the relationship just is like, um, it's maybe the relationship itself is making you happy, but your life overall has become less happy because a lot of the other things that did make you happy before you are no longer doing or no longer able to do right? Or no longer allowed to do or whatever. Um, so you're starting to become resentful, but something even worse is going to happen because that, that might almost be okay, right? If you, if you really like the girl and you know, it's the relationship itself is good. Maybe you can tolerate that. Um, but the other thing that's going to happen, and this is the really fucked up thing is that she's going to start losing attraction for you because you're too easy because you're too predictable because you're giving in on too many things because a lot of the things that made you flourish in high value, she's negotiated away from you and now you've become the safe beta male. And now all of a sudden, really fucked up, but she'll start to lose attraction for you as well. And when she starts to lose attraction for you, she'll start to make even more demands on you because if you're a high value guy, she doesn't require as much of you to date you. If you're a lower value guy, she'll require even more of you in order to date you. Um, and she'll start making more and more and deeper and deeper demands on you. And the relationship will start to like fall apart from the inside. And this happens, it's happened to me in the past. It's happened to so many people in the past. Um, and so it's really, really, really important um, to not go down that road. Okay. And the time to stop it is the very first time it happens because every single time that it happens, it gets harder and harder and harder. Every single time that she negotiates for something that she shouldn't have a right to negotiate for and you give in on it. The, the precedent has been established that this is acceptable behavior, which it's not, but that percent precedent has been established and um, that makes it more okay for her to do it in the future. Every single time that has happened, 
um, you're going to be a little bit less your truest self and you're going to be maybe a little more resentful. You're going to be more likely to fight. There's going to be more likely to be tension in the relationship and that's going to be negative. And every single little thing that you give in on um, along these lines, um, her uh, attraction for you might be very minuscule at first, but it's going to drop ever so slightly. And every single time the attraction drops, the next demand she's going to make on you by the very nature. And and this isn't like girls being evil, by the way, this isn't like girls being evil and insidious or anything like that. Um, But by the, by the nature of it, it's just going to be a bigger and bigger and bigger demand. Okay. Um, And so um, that route, you can recover from it. It's not easy, but you can recover from it, but it's so, so, so much better not to start down that route. I want you to actually write out and don't just do this in your head write it out. Okay. One more time, write it out, do the homework. I know I was the kid in, in high school that never did the homework. So I know if I were you right now, I'd be thinking, yes, Todd, I'll totally write it out. Roll my eyes. No, no, actually write it out. Okay. And this is coming from the kid who didn't do the homework, write it out. Um, write out what you want in a relationship. Ideally, like what is the type of relationship you actually want? What are the specific things that you want for yourself from the relationship? What are the specific things that you want from the girl in the relationship? Um, what are the things that, what are the reasons why you want those things? Because the stronger your reasons are, the more you're going to stick with them. What are the absolute things you will not compromise for the relationship? Where do you draw the line? Where is it that you say like, this is who I am and I will not bend this for the girl. And then there are other things that maybe you can bend for the girl because they're not that important to you. And those are okay. Those are okay. If there are things you truly do not care about and truly do not mind, you can give those up. However, I will tell you that if the girl is asking you to give something up, that even if you're willing to give it up, if she's asking you to give something up that she has no right to demand of you, even if you do give it up, make it very, very clear that she is in the wrong and she has no right to demand that of you because precedent is super, super important. And if you allow that precedent to be established, you're still going to end up in this like downward cycle where more and more and more can be demanded of you. Okay. Um, so I want you guys to actually write that out. What is it? What is it you want in the relationship and why? Okay. Um, what are your, what, what are your, what do you believe your responsibilities are in the relationship within the relationship of you and the girl? What is it that you are responsible for? Cause it can't be a one way thing. You can't just go into a relationship saying like, I want this and this and this and this and this and this from the girl. If you want things from her, it's, it's a negotiation. It's a contract. It's a relation. It's a relationship. It's not, it's not slavery. Okay. You need to say, this is what I'm willing to give because you are a value proposition to her as well. Okay. So that's very, very important as well. What are you willing to do? What do you expect from her? What do you want from her? Um, and then what are your, what are your, I will not, I will not go there. I cannot stand that. This is the border. I, I will not cross over that kind of stuff. Um, and it's very, very important that you know these things because you will be tested on them. Okay. You, this is, I sound like a teacher right now. You will be tested. There will be a test. It'll be on the final. There's no final, but there's the final exam of life, which is the relationship that can either be amazing or it can be completely awful. And you have the choice. You have the choice because relationships don't happen. Relationships are not accidental and relationships are not a natural outgrowth of two people coming together. Relationships are created by a series of choices by those two people. Um, and you have the power to make the choices that are going to create the relationship you want, or you have the power to make the choices that are create a bad relationship, or you have the power to abdicate those choices to the girl. Um, in which case she'll probably make relationship choices that are not what you would have wanted. Okay. So it's very, very important that you know what these criteria are, you know what you want, you know what you're willing to do and you proceed accordingly. Okay. Don't lead with rules and restrictions, lead with value. Right. So instead of a lot of guys are like, how do I get the girl to be exclusive with me? Because a lot of guys do want that. A lot of guys like a lot of you guys on here probably want multiple long term relationships, all this other crazy stuff. But a lot of guys on here probably also want a monogamous relationship and they want a girl to be loyal to them. And so they meet a girl. And the first thing they want to do is like, can we be together? Can we be loyal? Um, And if you're the one addressing that first and trying to like rule through restriction, rule through like this is um, rule through rules, basically. Um, you're going to be the one that's going to be in the position of lower value and lower power, right? On the other hand, if, um, you are trying to rule through, um, 
just providing so much value that the girl obviously would want good things to happen. She obviously would want um, more with you. And then she's the one asking for it. Now you're in a position of power, right? The person who, the person who is happier with the status quo is also usually in a position of power, which is also why it's so important to set up the proper status quo. It's also a reason why um, it's, it's so good to come from the lover frame instead of the provider frame because the girl wants, wants, she doesn't necessarily emotional, but she thinks she wants and her natural biological inc inclination is to push you towards the provider frame. And so she's going to be constantly trying to negotiate and trying to bring things up. The better, the, the, the further the initial position is from where she's trying to negotiate to, um, a, the more work she has to get to that, that place that you might not want, but B, even if you want to get there, it means that you have the opportunity to kind of negotiate more of the other ancillary things to be the way you want, right? So if she wants to be um, exclusive and you want to be exclusive as well, even, but you started out non-exclusive and player-ish and high value, well, she's going to negotiate to be exclusive and you're going to be totally fine giving into all those things. But at the same time, you'd be like, yeah, I'm okay with that. But listen, I, I need my free time. Hey, I need to be able to do my hobbies. Hey, I really like blowjobs in the morning, right? All these different things. Um, that make the relationship more the relationship you want to have are within the scope of the things that you can rightly ask for because she's the one trying to push things in that direction. So even if, even if you actually do want a monogamous relationship, um, not being the one pushing for it, having her being the one pushing for it is again, incredibly valuable because you know, she's the one um, moving things in that direction. Can you set precedent for her versus asking something from you and setting a precedent? Um, yeah, precedents are set in every way. So the way that you have sex the first time sets a precedent. The um, expectations, like if, if you tell a girl a story about your past relationships and she sleeps with you having heard that story, she sort of accepted um, you in that way, uh, you as the guy that has had those past relationships. Um, so that's setting a precedent um, in a way that's not even behavioral between you and her, but that's because you set your personality that way the precedent is established. So yeah, yours, everything you do is setting a precedent, whether it's from her demands or from your actions or whatever. Um, you're a virgin. What do you do when you get into a relationship for the first time? I would recommend don't be so focused on getting into a relationship per se. Um, we're at work on losing your virginity, work on becoming attractive to girls in general and finding what you want. And then think about getting into a relationship once you've found a girl that actually stands out as opposed to just getting into a relationship with the first girl that will have you or the girl you can lose your virginity with or whatever. Um, it'll probably be a lot healthier and a lot more abundance way to go about it for you. Uh, I think I'm a provider box. She wants me to meet her kids after the second date. <coughs> um, we'll talk about that one a lot more when we talk about fuck buddy versus girlfriends. Um, but in general, cause I know this might be an urgent thing for you. Um, if girls are asking these kind of things of you that are very girlfriendy and you're not willing to do them, um, I would probably either indicate, I would either put it off, actually indicate that I'm okay with it, but put it off, assuming you are potentially down the road okay with it. Um, or um, what I would do is I would just um, indicate, <coughs> excuse me, that um, that's not something you're entirely comfortable with yet, but that you you love them and you might be one day down the road. Um, so you're either basically saying, Oh, sure. Maybe, but not yet. Or you're actually just, um, just avoiding it to put it to not yet. Um, that's assuming that you'd be, you'd be willing to do it eventually. And, and to be fair, um, those kind of things, eventually I think they're fine, right? Even if, even if you're just hooking up with someone continually for a period of time, um, if you, if you do meet their kids or whatever, it's not necessarily the biggest thing, as long as the rest of the framing around it has been done in the right way. No, no one factor determines. It's not like, oh, I met her parents. Now she's my girlfriend as opposed to like hookup, right? Um, it, that's one of five or six or 10 different factors. So there's no one factor that determines everything. The overall framing will determine everything. Um, but in general, if there are things you're not specifically comfortable with or don't think are good ideas, don't give into them just out of pressure. Um, stand your ground, but have a good reason or a well-reasoned argument or a good philosophy as to why. Um, that is for her benefit as well as yours. If, if you have that, you're usually going to be pretty good. Uh, okay. So <laughs> as far as the conversation while in the relationship, should you keep the conversation similar to the way you talked to her on the first date? Um, how should you talk to your girlfriends? Does gaming ever end? It changes, but it doesn't end. Um, so even on the first date or on the first meetup, 
right? You start off being very silly and very fun and flirty and not very serious, right? And then as things go, you become a lot more intimate. You spend a lot more time getting to know her. You're a lot more caring. You build a lot more comfort. And instead of doing a lot of like harsh verbal things or things that manipulate her emotions, you're still controlling the frame and you're still directing the conversation, but it's much more um, agreed and conversational and slow. Um, and, and that's the way you communicate with your girlfriend is through conversation, through agreement. You're going to be very acknowledging of the fact that you love each other on, on a date. By the end of the date, there should be an acknowledgement that you both like each other, right? Um, that just continues. That, that trend continues deeper and deeper into the relationship. But it, it is important um, that as much as it's not as gamey in the traditional sense of game techniques, it is important that you retain your path and you retain your frame um, because that, that fundamentally is, is kind of who you are with respect to the relationship. And if, if that changes, um, then that's the person she liked. That's the person she was dating. If that changes too much, she might not like you anymore. And if that changes too much, you might not be very happy anymore. Um, so this guy says, this is a good question. He says, question on the homework. I wrote down, I want an open relationship, but I feel conflicted because of jealousy. So it's making my homework difficult. Um, what I would encourage you to do is ask yourself, why? Why do you want an open relationship? Is it for your ego? Is it because you want to explore and learn? Is it because you think that it's cool? Like, why do you actually want that? And it's quite possible that once you determine your why, that the why will overcome the jealousy. It's also quite possible that you're going to realize you don't really have a good why, and maybe you don't even want an open relationship. But um, I would say instead of just writing it down as like, this is what I want, try and write down what, why you want it and what you think you'll get out of it, and try and actually explore and think about it. Try and, try and get to know yourself a little bit with respect to that. And, um, and don't go in with a preconception. Don't go in with a preconception that that necessarily is what you want. Um, absolutely. Um, try and understand why and try and understand maybe there are other types of relationships that, that would achieve that even better for you. So as you're doing the homework and you're writing out what you want, ask yourself not just like, is this what I like? Like, don't just write down like what you think you want on paper. Ask yourself why you want that. Ask yourself what you hope to achieve from it, what emotions you want to have. Um, how you would see your life when that's happening, the more in depth and more involved you can do that, that homework mission, um, the better off you are going to be, right? So this shouldn't be something you jot down in two seconds and are done with. This actually should be a bit introspective, right? This should be something where you are soul searching a little bit and asking yourself really what it is you want.